two and a half year of owning these Kubota X series wheels. We have the X9 We also have the X1100C. This one is my preferred choice. This is a spectacular machine. You see what we use it. This is more of the farm maintenance. This is the, pretty much the farm kind of runs out of this thing because you can check the horses, keeps you dry. Lots of little ones. You little buddy. But this is my favorite out of the two. This machine in particular has had only one failure in a uh, coolant hose popped off. Obviously it was flying up and down the road. So we have 891 hours. Gets its daily oil changes. Glow plugs. Start beautiful. This one's got 8,000 kilometers. Still got the original tires. Kubotas. You have to have a window wiper with the windshield though with the full-on window washer. The Kubota one is nothing spectacular. It just works. I wouldn't mind actually maybe putting a, I guess a Western Star uses a clip-on style window wiper nozzle. So I can clip it on the actual wiper. Love this machine. Everything's hydraulic from the rear tail clip to the steering, full hydraulic, very, very nice. I really like the hydraulic and how these things are. It does feel good. You can steer it even with the engine turned off. The X1100C has a beautiful road cover that covers the exhaust. That cover makes a huge difference. That is a huge safety on the X1100C. Yeah, you're doing it cycling. Gotta love this machine. Reliability. Mechanical 1100cc motor. Diesel. The only reason it should be, a, your only good diesels are naturally aspirated. Mechanical. They stink and last forever. So, love this machine. The coolant line that popped off was on the front rad here, it was on the back. I popped it back on, uses clamps like this, perfect, I'm fine with that. I go over all of them, it had over 100 hours when it popped off, now it's got 806. Love this machine. This is now the second one, the first one was a 2015 and that 10,000 kilometers, we changed tires and it looks like this one's gonna be the same way. In Kubotas, this rear end compared to the RTV, uh, incredible the bearings on this one are tight this one is not used for its box this one is the glorified wheelbarrow it goes out drops fed all the horses amongst actually it's amongst two farms there's 200 acres of horses about 150 horses and this thing gets used it is loaded with shit every morning it is we've overloaded it a few times actually loading it up onto the ramps this is why i don't like the wider i guess there's a little more distance we never had this issue with the rtvs with the skinnier but longer boxes this machine is starting to exhibit a little bit more wear and tear it's wheel bearings and it's actually still hard to tell there, but if you actually really look closely at the axles, the wheel bearings got play in them. Fine, that's all right. I'm going to change them. Obviously, this machine is used quite a bit for its box. This one also exhibited a coolant line popping off on the red. We called Kubota to fix this one under warranty. And it was hilarious because the guy comes and he used up all the coolant filling it up before realizing that it's blown a line. Got to kick out of it because I need to drive and pick up more. These things are covered in plastics. Like, you know, I got to put in the ties to hold the plastic stuff, the little grommets. That is sheer cosmetic. 
and even if the lights pop off, I don't care. This one though, the fenders are holding up a lot better for the kind of use it sees compared to uh, compared to the old RT. Both these machines were bought at the same time. This one's got 1190 hours. This one's in miles because we had to bring it up from the States. I wish if anybody seen this video in comments on how to change that over to kilometers, I would absolutely love that. Never ever get a windshield with no window wiper, no washer fluid, a waste of money. It gets so dirty you can barely see it. The tires, because we're driving in the new one all the time, the rear tires actually draw us away. This machine will be three years old as of uh, November. And then right now it's June. And we had to replace them a couple months ago. If I was going to get this machine again, uh, uh, for what this machine's being used for, I would do the X1100 1120 going faster this one's slower it's, i don't like it near as much as the x 1100 c the x 1100 c just feels a lot nicer the reliability rock solid every single day that you stop and go fill up the stalls of manure right up to the roof and then go out and dump it out in the field this machine exhibited a fire very early on in its life so, I custom made this little plate. It's as simple as simple comes. It fits underneath the plastics. It protects all of that from going on to this. And you can see the way all of it is somewhat open. If you park it, Going through there, and you got a little bit of flammables on the exhaust manifold, it'll catch on fire. This machine caught on fire. I have a previous video of two machines that were right here and here. Breeze, just like right now, blowing up the hillside, and these machines are gone in no time, burning up not just this machine in particular, it's all farm implements that we use for straw and hay. I am a little more skeptical of this one and I'm going to try to keep the exhaust clean but we're not doing the same stuff with it. This is our very first Kubota with common rail and a full DPF system. I am hoping for the absolute longevity and durability of the AC system and the inside creature conference. I will not poke this a bad system if uh, something in the DPF filter fails or some DOC failure or sensors acting up or computer issues. It's just modern garbage. But it is very quiet with a DPF filter. This one does not have an SCR system. Yada yada if you can mention this is why I buy these little ones. There is no D this is a mechanical diesel. There's no farting and sputtering once she's warmed up. Yep. These are the only machines I would truly buy for the farm. Like yeah, oh yeah, defender. You get a, a can am defender and boy it's got six wheels and it goes stinking fast. I'm sorry, this thing goes every single day, and I'm sure it is not a piss tank on fuel compared to a Defender. And the Players Rangers, yeah, they're not, they don't have the durability of the freaking stand-up. John Deere Gators, we started with them when they were in their old 6x4s, and I loved them until we got our first Kubota RTV 900 and realized what actual durability was, something that you don't, worry about you start it up you drive it every day get started up there's no check engine lights because of the simplicity of the mechanical diesel engine For two and a half years the only failure we had was, uh, was a coolant line popped off in both machines and it was easy enough to go check them where we go check all the clamps and stuff all over tighten up all the uh, Clamps, make sure the friggin' filters are changed once in a while, changing oil once in a while. This one under severe use has now got rear bearing 
um, issues that are, well, just changing some wheel bearings when I feel it's time because they're going to just get sloppier and sloppier and probably start making noises. It doesn't go fast enough to make a whining noise. It only goes about, well, let's see. We're going to go take her to the radio. Alright, so high range. Pretty good turning radius, I don't know. Not that good. get off of it and it stops you have a heart attack and it freaking stops you get an idiot worker who jumps off the thing and it stops it doesn't hit a horse doesn't hit a fence doesn't hit friggin a tree it actually has a lot of stopping power even when you're going down now this thing pretty much i didn't touch the brakes but if you actually look closely it looks like i did and that's only the wheels it break even harder. And that's not even touching the brakes. If you hit the brakes, then you come to a dead stop. Love these machines. Durable. If you want to buy a machine just to drive it, if you have a, a weekend warrior project, uh, projects that are huge, this machine weighs about 1,600 pounds. So it does have a little grunt and it has the weight behind it to pull and yank. But when you get her stuck in the bush, God help you get a. 6,000 pound winch for this promo sucker. It's got the front and rear mounted PTO or uh, uh, receiver. Love that. And then to work. I think that's how I want to finish it off. This thing. I can't really say it's like an off road by any means. But the independent suspension makes it super comfortable. You can hit every pothole as fast as you possibly can. You can go off a gnarly little thing and it, it surprises you how it can absorb it. It ain't no Fox 3 or Fox 2 shocks. But Kubota has spent some big bucks in designing this heavy duty suspension and I am, I am satisfied. That diesel just burns. My opinion of the new transmissions, they're far, I kind of not even do it. We've got the new, newer RTD X900 and X series transmission seem to be far superior. We have burnt out a couple of the older HST transmissions and uh, the other components. So most of it is driving in high range, doing the stop and go. Stop and go. Every pile of green, stop and go. When they stop, they give medications, thyroid medications, because these are all freaking mares pretty much everywhere. There's the other thing. So they drive back and forth from one farm to the other, multiple farms, 25 stalls I think in total, of, and well, 200 acres. And these little things just putter along. Even if you have five more minutes of riding time, because it goes half the speed of a little Honda, and about a quarter of the speed of a Can Am, <laughs> it's all, it's all right. If it really bothers you, that's why you got an X1100C with air conditioning and a radio. That's how I'm going to end it off. If it's just too slow for you, the X1100C has the air conditioning. Alright, one last top speed.